And the next talk is by Or Isaacs, Oran Shire, and Michael Lindenbaum, and the talk will be given by Oran Shire. Okay, so uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Ron Shire. I'll present our work uh, enhancing generic segmentation with learned regional presentations. And this is joint work with uh, Ori Zaks and Michael Lindenbaum. I'll start with a quick uh, uh, overview or reminder of the generic image segmentation task. Uh, in this task, we wish to partition an image into parts that corresponds uh, to objects uh, which we don't have any prior information on. Uh, so basically the difficulties of this task is that we don't know the semantic meaning of uh, each segment. Um, and the test set can contain totally different objects uh, than those seen in the training set. Um, a quick overview of the recent approaches. Um, in 2011, uh, Malik's group uh, presented the Oriented Watershed Transform UCM. Uh, where you start uh, with an oriented contour map and then you extract the finest regions using the oriented watershed transform and then you iteratively merge um, uh, segments with the lowest edge strength in between them to get the segmentation hierarchy. Now this hierarchy uh, can be presented with an ultrametric contour map or UCM uh, which is essentially the weighted boundary image. Uh, Follow-up work built on top of that algorithm and improved it. Um, they uh, fused uh, multi-scale information in the process and they also trained multi-scale convolutional boundary detectors. Um, so all in all, uh, we can see that the edge detection uh, stage is a critical stage for this algorithm. And uh, DNNs were mainly used to improve this stage of the algorithm. But we know that uh, DNNs learn powerful representations um, and we started to ask ourselves, can we uh, use that uh, in the segmentation process uh, more directly? So let's further define our goal. Um, the image regions that are associated with the segments or the segmentation labeling uh, provides discriminative information about the segment separation. So intuitively, uh, there's a lot of information inside the uh, image region which we can use for the segmentation process, like the texture, the color values, uh, the context within the segment, the context uh, around the segment. And the question is, can we capture this, uh, these properties and use them in the segmentation process? So these properties are indeed implicitly used by deep edge detectors. But we believe that uh, using these properties uh, directly can further improve the segmentation. So our goal is to use DNNs to learn representations that capture these inherent segment properties and then combine it with uh, edge detection to improve the segmentation. So this is actually achieved uh, in tasks like semantic segmentation where uh, you can use the object identity to learn these region, this region information uh, directly. But the question is, uh, can we use it for our generic uh, segmentation task? Can we train uh, just a network on a super, with a su in a supervised manner to uh, achieve this goal? And this cannot be formulated uh, as a supervised task because, like I stated before, uh, we, don't know, we don't have uh, a set of known semantic labels for the training set, and the test set can contain totally different objects. So we cannot formulate this as a standard supervised task. So we need to figure out of a different way to learn uh, representations and to see how we can use them uh, in the segmentation process. So how can we approach this? Uh, well, when we started to uh, think about this, um, we started to realize there are some similarities to the face verification task, actually. In face verification, you can have training sets composed of thousands of different identities. But eventually, uh, in the test set, uh, you get two facial images, and you need to determine if it's the same uh, person or not. Uh, and these identities weren't necessarily seen in, in the training set. Um, so our case is somewhat similar uh, in concept, because uh, when we get test images with uh, unseen objects, we still need to cluster the pixels, and separate the pixels, and determine which ones belong to the same segment and which don't. OK. so. Realizing that um, 
let's see what was done in face verification recently. So a common approach for face verification is to find a representation for each facial image and then determine if uh, the two faces are of the same person or not according to the distance in the representation space. So basically, if the uh, representation uh, learned meaningful facial characteristics, then the representation distance would reflect the face relatedness. So the, these facial uh, representations uh, can be learned explicitly, for example, like done in FaceNet, uh, using a triplet loss. You basically get triplets of examples, pass them through um, networks with shared weights, triplet networks, and then you optimize uh, the losses, optimize directly over the representations themselves. So basically, we are trying to bring the positive examples closer in representation space and the negative ones further apart in representation space. These representations can also be learned implicitly, like done in DeepFace, for example, uh, by learning uh, over a high-level supervised uh, task, for example, classification, and then using uh, the representation from the last hidden layer as the face representation. So they learned uh, a classification network over a large uh, facial data set, and then when you get new unseen uh, identities test images, you can use the representation from the last hidden layer. So we want to apply uh, somewhat the same approach uh, in our case, but we, we are seeking for pixel-wise representations. Um, so we are looking for an n-dimensional uh, representation vector. Um, we want basically to get an image, pass it through some sort of uh, fully convolutional architecture, get a representation tensor, where each pixel has a corresponding representation vector. Now, the properties we are seeking from these representations is that uh, pixels of the same segment, like here in blue and green, should, have, should be close in representation space, and pixels uh, from different segments should be uh, further apart in this representation space. So this is, actually we can train this thing uh, pretty straightforwardly using a triplet loss like was done before, and we can optimize directly over the representation. And the question is, can we uh, also do it through some implicit uh, high-level classification task like was done uh, for, for faces? Well, this is a little, uh, this is a, a bit uh, less straightforward. Basically, in faces, uh, the given labels are already um, semantically meaningful. It's the facial identities of the, of the people in the data set. But in generic segmentation, the labels are semantically meaningless. So the given labels are uh, essentially random. Like we can see here, um, the two objects uh, in the center of the images are given the same label because it's a random, just a random uh, numbering of the labels, of the segments inside the image, but it's totally different objects. So we cannot just um, take the whole data set and train um, on the given labels as is. So uh, to solve this issue, what we suggest is to consider the set of uh, segments from all the images in the training set as different categories. So basically we assign a unique label to every different segment in every image in the training set. And this way we create uh, thousands of different segments from the whole data set and uh, this way we avoid the problem that we've seen uh, in the previous slide. Okay, but now uh, the problem that occurs is the, actually the exact opposite. What happens if we have two segments in two different images, which are essentially the same, like the skies that we see here on the, both images, and we try to teach a classification network to separate them, but these segments essentially have the same properties. This would lead to a network that learns representations that rely on small differences, arbitrary properties like noise or image location. And this is, of course, very, uh, very unwanted. So how do we suggest to solve this? Uh, when training on a particular image, we limit the possible predicted classes only uh, to the classes that appear in the current image. So basically, when we perform the backpropagation, for each example, we limit the gradients to propagate only from labels that appear in the current image. The representation learning network um, is a fully convolutional uh, architecture with a ResNet 50 backbone, skip connections, and dilated convolutions in the fifth convolutional layers. 
The last function uh, for this high-level classification task that we set up is a weighted cross-entropy uh, loss function, where we assign a higher weight uh, to pixels closer to the boundary uh, to make the network more boundary aware. And I remind you that eventually we are seeking for the representation tensor from the last hidden layer. Okay, so now we established some learning method uh, to capture some pixel representations. And before diving into the segmentation algorithm using these representations, we first want to play around with it and see if it has um, some good segment sep uh, separation uh, properties. So we examine it on a rather simple pixel classification task where uh, for every image we um, sample two random pixels and we need to determine if it's the same pixel or not. And we determined that only um, using uh, a threshold uh, over the distance in representation space. So this should be a nice indication of how useful these representations can be for separating pixels. We can compare this representation uh, to several other possible representations. Some of them are quite simple, like passing the image through a set of Gabor filters and using the output uh, as the pixel representations. We can also use uh, the color values as the representation. Uh, a bit more sophisticated um, representations can be uh, representations that are uh, from a network learned uh, over material classification. So materials are known to hold strong texture characteristics, which is an important property for segment separation. Uh, we can use the representation from a network that was learned on semantic segmentation. We can train the representation network using the triplet loss which is this we suggested, or using the implicit uh, classification task that we set up in previous slides. And this is actually what achieved the best results uh, for this pixel separation task. So, so far we have uh, these pixel representations which we believe can be useful for ge the generic segmentation task. But now we want to sh use them in some sort of algorithm and see if it does improve the segmentation quality. So our algorithm uh, is called boundaries in region representation uh, fusion. And like the name imp implies, uh, for each image we extract the edge map and the representation tensor, and we want to see how we can fuse them to get the final segmentation. We start with initialization. Um, we extract the edge map uh, from the image, and obtain an initial oversegmentation using the oriented uh, watershed transform. Independently, uh, we extract the representation tensor. Now we want to start an uh, iterative merging process. Basically, we want at each iteration to merge two segments. Previous approaches, like we saw, uh, relied on the edge strength as the dissimilarity measure. Uh, what we want to do is to um, estimate some kind of dissimilarity measure or score according to which we will merge. And we want this dissimilarity to rely on the edges, but also on the representations that we learned. So to do that, we train a classifier that given two adjacent segments uh, decides whether we should, merge, we should merge them or not. This classifier is fed with uh, several features. Some of them are representation-based features, like the uh, distance of the average representations of the segments we are examining, the edge strength, and several other uh, geometric and raw color features that we extracted from the segments. We train the classifier to decide whether to merge or not merge. Um, and we use the uh, output probability, or the soft uh, output, is the parity similarity score. So basically, the lower uh, the score that we get from the classifier, the higher the probability that we should merge the two segments. OK, so now we have some dissimilarity measure. We can use that at each iteration and merge the two segments with the lowest dissimilarity score. That works well. But an improved decision uh, can be achieved also by relaying on a context-based clustering test, which is called the silhouette score. The silhouette score is a cluster separation measure. I'll first uh, introduce the measure quickly, and then I'll show how we use it uh, in our case. Let's say we have a set of examples here. Each example has some representation R. Um, we have some clustering estimate, like we can see here, the three cl clusters here. And we want to examine how well clustered is, for example, the segment on the left, compared to the other segments. 
This segment will be denoted as S, and the union of all segments on the right will be denoted as Sn. For each example uh, inside the cluster, uh, like the one in blue here, we first calculate the uh, representation distance between this example and all other examples within the cluster. This will be denoted as A. Uh, following that, we calculate the, the average representation distance between this example and all the examples outside the cluster. And then the silhouette score of uh, this specific example I is uh, determined by a ratio uh, composed of these values A and B. And the silhouette score of the entire cluster we are examining is the average silhouette score of all the examples within it. So basically what we need to uh, get from this score at the moment is that the higher the score is, the better uh, the indication that the cluster is well separated. How do we use it in our case? Let's say we are examining uh, two adjacent segments to a merge candidate. And we are asking ourselves, should we merge these two uh, segments in red? These will be the, uh, the cluster denoted in S. And we want to compare how uh, well clustered is this uh, merge compared to all the segments around it. So the merge of all the segments around it in blue will be denoted as Sn. All the other segments uh, are irrelevant for now. We calculate the silhouette score for the merge candidate S. And then we uh, combine it linearly with the pair dissimilarity score that we got from the train classifier to get our final augmented dissimilarity score. So this score is the final similarity, uh, dissimilarity measure, according to which we uh, choose which segments to merge at each, each iteration. So basically, um, at each iteration, we merge the two segments with the lowest augmented dissimilarity score. So the process would look something like this. This creates uh, the segmentation hierarchy. And now we established uh, some algorithm and we showed how to fuse our presentations in several stages of the algorithm and we want to see how it, how it performs. Um, We'll start with uh, examining the BSDS dataset. I'll first, sh first show some uh, qualitative uh, results, some segmentations that we got. Here are a few examples. Now we can see that we get uh, pretty high quality segmentations qualitatively. Let's examine it uh, quantitatively with some measures. I'll start with the F measure for boundaries, the boundaries quality measure. Uh, we examine two variants of our algorithm um, according to two different classifiers that we train. The first is logistic regression, and the second is multilayer perceptron. We can see that on most uh, boundary measures, we either match this state of the art or passed it. And we can also look at the precision and recall graph our graphs are the green and blue on the top. Uh, we also exa examined the F measure for, uh, uh, for the region uh, quality. This is the measure that we actually got the most significant improvement on. Uh, we can see that we passed the state of the art and improved it on all uh, region measures. And we can also look here at the precision and recall graph. So basically this makes sense because our main contribution in the algorithm is direct region representations. Um, so this is why this is somewhat expected that this is the most significant improvement that we see. We can also examine uh, the algorithm on a much uh, larger data set uh, called Pascal Context and we witness the same trend here. Um, the most significant improvement again is for the region measures. So um, let's uh, sum up with some conclusions. Basically task with, uh, complete, uh, without complete object class labels can benefit uh, from using a representation learning scheme for the algorithm. We propose such a scheme uh, to learn pixel-wise region representations that achieve the high score in uh, pixel pair classification tasks that we suggested. Uh, we proposed an algorithm that fuses these uh, region representations along with edge detection. And then we showed that these region representations uh, complement the edge information and improve the segmentation quality. 
that's it. Um, more information and ablation studies can be found uh, on the paper, which is on archive, and the code will be released soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Time for a couple of questions. So let me ask one. You assume you have some sort of pixel labeling uh, for the segmentations at first, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Can you assume that you don't have any labels at all? Any labels at all? And then assume that nearby pixels in the image plane belong to the same segment and pixels far away belong to a different segment? This will be a noisy labeling uh, input, but maybe you can solve it this way. You mean to use that for the representation learning at first? You can do that. It's rather noisy labeling. I guess you would also, you can learn some um, inherent segment properties using that, but um, I guess the, the representations of pixels closer to boundaries would be very noisy and unreliable. So this is somewhat possible, but you'd have a, I guess you would have a, a severe problem around edges. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.